not just going to mark you, he's going to demand that you plead allegiance to him. That is what makes people unsavable. Because God says, I will hold you to your vows. God says, don't be quick to make any vows because any vow you make, I'll force you to abide by that vow. So to plead allegiance to the evil spirit or the spirit of the Antichrist is to allow the spirit to rule your mind. Tell somebody, it's to allow the spirit to rule your mind. It is, to, it, it is to be loyal to that evil spirit. It is to be strengthened and to be empowered by that spirit. So when God says that they will receive a mark, he's talking about people are going to be controlled in their mind with that spirit. That spirit is going to possess their mental faculties. That spirit is going to control their emotions. That spirit is going to take over their will. That spirit will make them puppets of diabolical implementations of Satan on earth. Just like God uses yielded vessels to accomplish his purposes, Satan is going to find his own yielded vessels that are willing to accomplish his purposes. The sons of God are going to again fight the sons of Cain. Why was Cain called one of the evil one? Why? Because he chose to surrender his members to be used by Satan. He, he chose to yield himself to a diabolical spirit. And to, in, in this end time, we're going to have the sons of God fighting against the sons of Cain or the sons of rebellion or those who have chosen to align themselves with satanic powers. Are you beginning to understand it? So if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead and his hand, he shall drink the wine of God's wrath and fury poured out in strength and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone before the holy angels and before the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever. Those who worship the beast and his image and those who receive the mark of his name have no rest day and night. That is the punishment that is going to fall upon those who receive the evil spirit. And do you know what? When Jesus came, what happened? There was a forerunner. Okay? Who was the forerunner? John. John came in the spirit of who? Elijah. There was a spirit that John came in. It was a spirit of Elijah. But Jesus warned us that before the Antichrist comes, there's going to be false prophets. So he's going to send his false prophets out in the earth before he manifests himself. So if you want to know before the Antichrist comes, just look at the, the multiplication of false prophets right now in our time. And you will know he's getting closer. Because he's going to have his own representatives that are going to usher him. He's going to have, he's a copycat. He copies everything Jesus did. He is not an original. Satan is a forger. Tell somebody he's a forger. He's a, he's a, a plagiarizer. He plagiarizes things. He has no originality or creativity. He copies. So because Jesus was ushered in by John, he's going to release his own minions, false prophets, filled with a diabolical, false lying signs and wonders, and false prophecy. And they're going to deceive people because the church has got into a place where we are chasing after signs and we love miracles. Nobody wants to be grounded in the word of God. And Satan loves it. Because believe me, it can display signs and wonders. But they are lying. Anytime Satan gives you anything, you pay for it. God gives free. <laughs> Satan will make you pay. Huh? One of your babies will have a big head somewhere. Some kind of a sickness and a disease that kills them. You know, Somebody in your family is going to die in an accident really quickly. It will make you pay. It, it doesn't give anything free. Let's look at another forehead very quickly here. Another forehead marking is mentioned where the woman who writes the beast in chapter 17 of Revelation. On her forehead was a name written, a mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of all prostitutes, the detestable things of the earth. Revelation 17, 5. So we can see this forehead marking here is like a brand, okay? 
is a marking of identity and allegiance. He says, Christ is a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. And according to the order of Melchizedek, you have no father, you have no mother, and you have no origin. So for him to exist as a priest according to the Melchizedek, he has no origin either, which means he is God. God was in Christ reconciling the world to who? To himself. So who is Christ? Christ is the physical body of God. <laughs> then I saw the thrones and the people that sat upon them. Those whom authority to judge was given. Listen to this. The, the authority, those, those who authority was given to judge. Listen to the people who are going to be judging. Those whom authority was given to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Yeshua. And because of the word of God. Guess who's going to help God judge in heaven? Only those who have been martyred for him. They had not worshipped the beast or his image. That, that means that they not compromised their values. That, and they came to life and they reigned with the Messiah for a thousand years. Look at the people who are ruling and reigning with him. They are victorious people. Tell somebody victory. People who are victorious. People who take a stand. Tell somebody people who take a stand. People who fight back. They shall see his face. Those are the only people that will see his face. And his name shall be on their forehead. <laughs> that means that the name, the name of Jesus will fill them up to the point where when you look at them, you'll see their boldness and their passion for Jesus. His name will be inscribed on their forehead. I don't think that's a physical inscription. But when you see them, you'll see Jesus. You'll see the reflection of him. You'll see the beauty of his face. You'll see the radiance of his glory upon them. Why? Because they chose to take a stand. They did not compromise. Not in the season of begging people. We have entered the season of commitment. Extra commitment. Loyalty. Devoutness. Piousness. Consistency. Harmony with the spirit. The priest was told you shall make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it like an engraving of a signet holy to the Lord and you shall fasten it to the tavern by the cord of blue and it shall be on the front of the tavern verses 38 and it shall be on Aaron's forehead and Aaron shall bear the guilt of for the holy things that the people of Israel consecrate as the holy gifts and it shall be a regular thing on his forehead and they shall be accepted before the Lord God is saying we have to make that choice to wear him. Tell somebody, wear Jesus. Clothe yourself with Jesus consistently. That people may see his reflection upon you. He says, make up your mind today. Where is your allegiance? You know? Elijah asked the people the same, same question. Why do you keep wavering back and forth? Make a commitment today. Either God is God or Baal is, is God. Choose today. Don't waver about it. And he gave them the opportunity to, to dance to their drums for hours and, and roll on the ground and weep and their God was asleep. Couldn't wake up. And Elijah said, maybe you need to sing a little louder. Maybe you need to dance more. Maybe your drums need to be amplified a little bit to another level so they can... He's deaf, you know, he doesn't hear you. Or maybe he woke up on the wrong side of bed and he can't get up. So just do... do, do Add your mechanism, you know, mechanize everything, make it extravagant, you know, polish it, you know, paint it. <laughs> God was not responding. The God was not responding. Let God be God. And I think God is asking us today to make up our mind, make allegiances, take a stand, be willing to stand up and be counted, even to the point of dying. They loved not their lives to the point of what? Of death. This is what Billy Graham says, courage is contagious. He says, when brave men take a stand, the spines of others are often stiffened. I like this. One of my mentors, Leonard Ravenhill, he says, the early church was married to poverty, prisons, and persecution. But today's church 
is married to prosperity, personality, and popularity. Let that sink. <laughs> the early church was married to poverty, prisons, and persecutions. But today's church is married to prosperity, personality, and popularity. Here's another quote from Leonard Ravenhill. If Jesus had preached the same message that ministers preach today, he would have never been crucified. It is true. If Jesus came to preach to the first and chosen of today, they would have not crucified him. They would have actually given him a multi-million dollar house and a private jet and a limo. And they could have made his life really comfortable. They would have loved him. They would have celebrated him if he was preaching the message that we preach today. Nobody would have crucified him. They would have called him the darling. If, you know, they would have said, you are the uh, people pleaser. You know, preach the message that is nice and tickling to our ears so that we can keep you longer. Hmm? But you start preaching people out of their comfort zones and they want to stone you. Now you know you're preaching. Hmm? You finish preaching and people are upset with you. They need a week to think about what to do with you next time they see you. <laughs> the seal of God is the mark of identification of ownership. Tell somebody it's the mark of identification of ownership. It guarantees your eternal safety. It certifies that your relationship with God is what? Is real. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 to 14 that tells us what is the mark of God. He says, and you are also included in Christ when you had the, the message of truth, the gospel of salvation, when you believed and you were marked with, 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 in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing your inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's position to the praise of his glory. So we see that when God is saying he's marking people on their forehead, he's talking about filling them up with the Holy Spirit to the point where their minds or their thinking, okay, their boldness. This is like Acts chapter 1 verses 8. But you'll receive power after the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you'll be what? Witnesses. The Spirit of God came to empower. So when God marks his people, he empowers them for what? For a purpose. Tell somebody, God empowers you for a purpose. The 144,000 are empowered for what for purpose why because we're told that there's millions of people that come out of the tribulation who was preaching to them the 144 but what what was done to them they were marked by god before they went preaching so tell somebody if god marks you it's for you to serve his purposes god doesn't mark you to sit down on it and you don't need a pulpit the pulpit is the world tell somebody the pulpit is the world is the world around you that is the pulpit start doing what god has called you to do and you'll see where god will take you god will take you to strange places that you've never been god will tell you to do crazy things that you thought you will never do and he will be there with you backing you up through it why because he has marked you he never marks you so that you can sit on it he marks you so that you can serve tell somebody i've been marked for purpose i'm gonna finish here in Revelation chapter 7, it talks about the 144,000. It says, After this I looked, and before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, and people, language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. And they were wearing white robes, and they were holding palms and branches in their hands, and they cried out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. So think about having a seal on your forehead. Is God is saying that He wants you to take a step forward. The Spirit of God is dwelling in your heart. You are a witness. You've been anointed and empowered for service. The angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the, uh, the four uh, living creatures and they fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever and ever. Amen. And then the elders asked, this in white robes who are they these are they who have come out of the tribulation they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb 
So it means that the 144,000 are the prophets of God during the tribulation of God. And these men are men of integrity. So when people tell me that, oh, it's a mixture of Gentile people who have been saved and some of them are left, uh, you know, are left behind in the rapture. So they, no, 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 no. It says that there are 12,000 from every 12 tribes of Israel. And it says that they are men who have not defiled themselves with women. It says, in other words, your ceiling comes with a purpose. Tell somebody, my ceiling is a purpose. You belong to God. The eternity is already secured. Your sins are forgiven. The hope of heaven is yours. You are empowered by God and the Holy Spirit. And you allow God to use you to be his witness. That's what Acts chapter 1 verse 8 talks about too. Listen, those, those who are marked with the mark of the beast are marked with the evil spirit. I want you to understand that. That's the most important part. Is that those who are marked with the mark of the beast are marked with a counterfeit evil spirit. They are bold for their father, the devil. They are already branding themselves as evil people and they are happy about it. You have drunkards who are happy with being drunkard. There's rebellious and stubborn people and demonic and witch, witches and warlocks who are proud to be in those positions. What are they doing? They are wearing the mark of the beast in their foreheads and they are bold about it. They are empowered by the evil spirit to perform his evil agenda. Their purpose will be indoctrinating children into evil. And they are already doing it right now. They're boldly declaring their diabolical appetite and perversions in the public. They recruit weak people. They recruit the carnal believers into the camp of evil. They perform evil signs and wonders deceiving many people. And many people love it. Jeremiah talked about it. It's the prophets are prophesying lies. And my, my, my priests are ruling by their own opinion. And the people love it that way. People love to be lied to. Let's read Ephesians chapter 2 verses 2. Wherein in the time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in children of what? Disobedience. So that spirit is already here. It's going to get intense. It's already working on children of disobedience. In 1 John chapter 4 verses 3, And every spirit that does not confess Jesus or acknowledge that he has come in the flesh, but deny any of the Son's true nature, is not of God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and is now already where? In the world. What is that spirit? That is the forerunner spirit for darkness. It's already preparing people to receive these false signs and wonders. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9, it says the coming of the Antichrist, the lawless one, is, is one is through the activity of Satan. Tell somebody activity of Satan. Attended with great power. Did it say some little tiny power? Mm -mm. It says it's attended by great power with all kinds of counterfeit miracles, deceptive signs and wonders. All of them lies. But people will buy into it. So when we think God is the only one who will be able to perform miracles in these last days, Satan can perform false lying signs and wonders that are so convincing that even the people of God will think it is true. Listen to this, it says, I saw a beast coming out of the sea. He had ten horns and seven heads with ten crowns on his head and on each a blasphemous name. And the beast that I saw resembled a leopard, but he had, he had feet like that of a bear and his mouth the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave the beast his power and his throne. Listen to that. The dragon is Satan. He gave who? He gave the beast. Who is the beast? The Antichrist. He gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority which means that when you see antichrist satan will have given him his seat that is not just a seat it's a spiritual seat that satan has been sitting on he gives it to this man how does he do it he enters into that man and he does whatever he wants with that man that man will not fight satan he will be committed just like jesus was committed to the father to the point of dying the antichrist will be committed to the to the dragon to the point where he is willing to do anything the dragon wants him to do but listen to this he will be given power a throne and great authority but one of the beast head seemed to have a fatal wound and the wound will be healed that is the devil faking resurrection so people are able to refuse to accept that jesus died and rose again 
but they're going to accept when this guy is shot and he comes back to life and everybody's going to celebrate and say he is the Messiah it says here you will have one wound on the head but it will the fatal wound be will be healed and the whole world was astonished and followed the beast and men worshiped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast and also they worshiped the beast and asked who is like the beast who can make war against him so it's, it's difficult for them to accept Jesus rose from the dead but they will accept this beast getting shot and coming back again to life this is Satan faking the resurrection do you know that's what Satan always does he comes to you really nicely he pretends to be an angel of light you trust him he gives you nice words huh? His, his prophets do the same thing. They tell you nice words. God loves you. You're amazing. You are one of a kind. And then you, you keep going to that prophet because he tells you the things that you like to hear. Oh, tell me another word. I'll give you $50 offering. <laughs> You're one of a kind. And God, God, God's going to give you a beautiful desires of your heart. He's going to give many people will follow this deception without even knowing okay and satan will bring even those who are not accepting and he will introduce the false prophet you know when the false prophet is introduced is is introduced when the antichrist has that wound when he has been shot and is in that position of you know being brought back that's when the false prophet will be ruling because the power of the antichrist will be given to the false prophet and he will go around gathering people for himself he says i saw another beast so now there's two beasts i saw another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns like the lamb but he spoke like a dragon which means he pretends to be christ-like but he lies okay is a false prophet so he comes and he pretends to be friendly to those who believe in faith but he says this the whole inhabitants of the earth will worship the first beast and those fatal wound had been healed and so they worship him and he performed great miracle signs even causing fire to come down from heaven to add in full view of men because of these signs he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast he deceived the inhabitants of the earth he ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded so while the beast is wounded and is about to be brought back to life we have the false prophet telling people to worship what an image he sets up an image and says everybody gotta worship this does it remind you of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego Mm -hmm. I believe it, it, this false prophet is going to raise an image and force everybody everywhere to do what? To worship. He forces the inhabitants of the earth. He orders them. He sets an image and in honor of the beast that was wounded. And he's given power to give breath to the image of the first beast. He puts an image up. But somehow he makes that robot speak. Blasphemous thing it could speak and cause all who refuse to worship the, the image to be killed he also forced everyone small and great rich and poor that is he will cause this image to, to to speak things he will speak things that will make people get killed i saw people going to this um, showrooms where they're showing these robots that are human-like and people are asking them questions programming them they're gathering the most intelligent people in the world and they're taking their knowledge and putting it into these robots. They don't have a will. Robots don't have a will so they can kill. So if they just kill this person, kill. They take orders and they execute. They force everybody great and small, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand and their forehead so that no one could buy or sell unless they have the mark which is the name of the beast and the number of his name. 666 computer i tell you it's computer it's taking up people's jobs amazon now has actually a refrigerator that talks to you hmm? have you seen it oh yeah they're selling one a refrigerator that tells you that your food is running out talks to you and says hey your food is running out you need to add your milk 
have you ever wondered why the the cable people want to get into your house so much that even when you tell them you don't want anything they tell you bundle up please bundle up you can bundle this one i don't want to bundle bundle up do you know why they do that i just want the internet no bundle up with the phone bundle up with this do you know why the cable system will never go away It's because they want to get into your home and if they can get into all homes they can use that system for monitoring yeah alexa now can open your doors garage door open and they want to make sure that all these things are connected to what internet because oh, more, of course they can't see you and now they want you to connect your connect your you know connect your refrigerator to google yeah they want you to connect every electronic to google through alexa and you know what google do google mark, maps people's houses okay so google will start mapping your house for you and telling you where all your stuff are if you miss them google in partnership with alexa huh? you see the trinity of evil developing here we see this chapter in the first the first beast has suffered the wound which looked like it killed him but then he recovered so satan this is satan's nod to the resurrection but he does what he, he rises up and everybody washes worships him and thinks that he is the Christ resurrected because he claims to be the Messiah the Antichrist will not just be a religious leader he will also have religious ties but he will be a political military leader and the false prophet will become the world spiritual leader whose job is to bring the world to bow to who to Satan and we already see the Catholic Church and all those other Islam and all those you know ganging up together to form one world religion and sooner or later they're going to be forcing people to worship on a particular day to not include this they're going to come after your Bibles that's why I'm saying you gotta stay stay with the old-fashioned Bibles that have not been corrupted because now they have a job right they're changing the Bible slowly by slowly I told you the work of the devil doesn't start immediately it's gradual make the bible more acceptable to the public so what do you do we find new words that are you know that are cool with young people oh, let's make the bible cool for young people the bible was never intended to be cool for anybody and say the holy spirit is the holy father amen i'm gonna say it here the holy spirit is the holy father not the stinking pope But you know, he calls, he calls himself the Holy Father. That's a blasphemy. Jesus called his Father, Jesus called the Heavenly Father, Holy Father. And I'll show you where Jesus is praying and calling his Father, Holy Father. Out there we call a human being, Holy Father. Here we go. Let's, let's read John chapter 17 verses 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Jesus is talking to his Father. Holy Father, keep them through thy own name. Those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. He is calling his Father the Holy Father. Since when did this guy become a Holy Father? You, you see you can begin to see this these people aligning themselves to create that new religious order and they just signed some papers recently that they made agreements to compromise they made agreements to compromise so that they can bring whole the whole Christians all over the world should come together and compromise something so that we can get along with the Islam we'll never get along He says the coming of the lawless one will be the accordance to the work of Satan displayed in all kind of counterfeit miracle signs and wonders and every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing and they perish because they refuse to love the truth and to be saved for this reason God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe a lie so that all who will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in 
wickedness so god says he sends them a delusion why because they do not love the truth when you cease to love the truth of god's word god will allow you to be swept away by delusions of this world it will be easy for the false prophet to turn the people to the antichrist why because they refuse christ so god will let them have what they want refuse jesus and god will say well you can have what you want they also won't have a problem with the antichrist why because the antichrist will look wonderful it will not look like the red suited devil with a spandex with horns you will be a wonderful person charming and successful and you will appear like an angel of light with a sense of 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 humor and you will be looking messianic you will look you will have that future that drives people and people start thinking there's something about it there's an awe about him it may be a demonic awe people will commit abominable acts and they will worship the image of the beast throughout the history of Israel you know this has been happening throughout the history of Israel in the Old Testament God has always warned them against worshiping what images that are made with human hands but it will come again to haunt them because they will see this false Messiah erect an image in the temple and demand for everybody to worship it and that's when they will realize ah, uh -uh, this is idolatry so the key to survival in the tribulation period pay attention because we want to be allowed to taste a little bit of it God will allow us to see a little bit of it before the angels come in here quickly and rough everybody and snatch everybody out God will permit us to see the horde and the swarm of demons coming upon the earth God's going to allow that sky to be darkened so that we get to the point where we are like all right Lord we're ready to get out of here and then the angels will come quickly and do their job of taking everybody listen the, the 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 survival in the tribulation will depend on what it will depend on an identifying number you will not be able to buy or sell without that universal number circulated across the world now they're forcing all worldly leaders to take pictures of their own people force them to take numbers so that they can be able to do what they can begin to institutionalize you so the first step that Satan will use to dehumanize people is to institutionalize you. How do they do it? Reduce you to a number. Tell somebody, be reduced to a number. How would you feel when you go to a place and instead of you being called by your name, you're being called by a number? Number 23. You go to the barber shop, you got to take a number. You go to the doctor's place, you got to take a number that is always the first step to dehumanize people is to replace your name with a number where, where do you think the numbering system in prison started from even in the prison you go to the prison the first thing they do is they take your name away and give you a number prisoner number two when you're doing what when you're born they give you social security number When you go to the bank to transact money, what do they do? There's a bank number. And if you lose your powers, password, there's a code. And the code is a number. This is a temporary code. <laughs> you can only use it for a few, few hours. Okay? Now, ne ne next time I'm going to talk to you guys about how they're going to use these numbers to control you and we're going to go deeper until you're going to begin to see that there is some emergency powers that have been given to the president of the united states that you guys have no idea of there's actually emergency numbers that have been given to the president of the united states that can force him to tell the bank not to give you your money when you go to get it out and then can put a limit on what you can take out they can say today you're limited to 25 dollars only did you know that president of the united states has power to do that we'll see that you're being prepared this is rehearsals okay when you're when you're swearing in in the court what do they do raise your right hand why not the left hand raise your right hand you're being prepared to swear allegiance to a system we are feeding you and you can't attack the hand that feeds you because it will take its hand away and you starve to death a day will come when they tell they starve your they take your husband and they inject him they inject him with the narcotics 
okay and they keep injecting him until he looks like he's a zombie now and they want the family to take the mark if you don't take the mark we're going to continue doing this to this person until the whole family or they'll come and put legs on the neck of your babies and say we're going to kill the baby now you take the mark it will get there they're preparing right now in Canada they already did it they do they frost they frost all the accounts for truckers all the truckers that were protesting all their accounts were all of a sudden frozen mm -hmm. so all these tech companies they, they want you to be connected you know Bill Gates when he started he wanted to put a computer in every person's desk but that is long time ago now Mike Zuckerberg came around and he says he want to connect everybody well now they don't want to just connect you plus your computer now they want to connect your refrigerator they want to connect your <laughs> your oven they want to connect your <laughs> microwave they want to connect your TV they want to connect everything in your house and they want Alexa to talk to you not the Holy Spirit Do you know what this is? This is the face of an ant. If you magnify the, the face of an ant, an ant, this is five times magnification of a face of an ant. That's how an ant look at really close, close by. Now you're going to look at those little things that are crawling in your house differently from today. Yeah, this is a picture that was taken by a Canon camera and they magnified it five times. And this is how an ant's face look closely. You know, Hollywood people should just you take that to, they will make some scary stuff to scare people. When you see those pictures from Hollywood with demonic faces, what do you think? Those people probably have already seen these things, right? They know how they look. But God put them also on these creatures so that we can know how those creatures that are in hell, hell is underneath the ground. Huh? <laughs> God wants to tell us the creatures that dwell in the soil, how they look like. And our demons look like how they fell from glory and they lost their beauty. And this, and this is the one mentioned in Revelation that we are told that it will be biting people. Eh? We are told that there will be locusts coming from the abyss and they will bite people. They will have a, a, a tail that looks like a scorpion tail. Eh? And they look like, um, they will look like, uh, you know, they will look like, uh, locusts they will look like locusts they, and they have a tail of a scorpion and they have uh, you know they have horns on their head and they're flying like insects uh, it, I, I, I tell you and, and, and we are told that this thing would be biting people during the tribulation people will beg death to come and death will not come He says that the, the, the oceans will be turned into blood and every creature in the water will die. That means that there will be no fishing. You won't be able to fish because everything you're fishing for is dead. That blood will kill all the fish. I don't know why people want to be here to experience these things, but I, 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 don't, want to, I don't want to encounter that creature. <laughs> I think even from today I will look at ants differently. <laughs> I don't want to see that. But God will make people wish that they received Jesus while it was still while there was still grace. I believe God is telling us to be awake and to stand out for our faith even if people hate you let them hate you because you're standing for Jesus don't don't crave to be liked nobody likes Jesus they crucified him All right and when when it counted the most there's only a few people who are standing by the cross there's only John and, and, and Mary there all the other disciples also are hiding in a room somewhere afraid of being killed the only people who were not afraid of death at that point was Mary and John and a few of the women who were shown mercy by him. I believe Mary Magdalene wasn't afraid either because she was over there by the tomb when everybody was afraid of the Roman soldiers. If Jesus has loved you and done amazing things in your life, you're not afraid to testify of him. It doesn't matter who doesn't like you. 
And I think God is calling us to take a stand. I want to warn you into expecting some kind of a mark that will be forced on you. If anybody forces a mark on you, it doesn't do anything. You know why? It's just a mark. But it is dangerous if it is a mark that follows an allegiance and an oath and a vow. It becomes dangerous. When this guy will come and say, you renounce Christ and you make allegiance and commitment to serve me and you receive my spirit in you. When he comes and says that, that's when the mark becomes dangerous. But this physical mark is not going to be spiritual, but it will be a point of controlling people. The real mark is spiritual. It's the spiritual control of the mind. It's the spiritual control of the emotions and the will. It's that surrendering of your whole spiritual faculty to another force, another spirit that manipulates it for his own purposes. But the chip that is put inside of you will be only for tracking you down and making human bodies synchronized with machines is already happening. Remember, if you mix God's creation with something else, you will have Frankenstein situation. They will create something that will be impossible to kill. So when God warned that these things will, will lead the world into trouble, you may just find all those nightmarish conditions that you see on Hollywood movies of spiders who have overgrown human beings and they have developed an appetite of homo sapiens. We don't want an ant that looks like that chasing human beings that has been, you know, an ant that is, has, is now the size of an elephant chasing human beings to, to disembalm them. One thing to rejoice over though, we are getting out of here. The time is coming and we're going to get out of here and we want to, God may allow us to see a little bit of it because I think the church wants to be, the church want to be removed here quickly so that we don't have to walk out on our salvation and live right. So we want to be, you know, God just took me out of the problems of this life. No, he may want us to face a little bit of persecution.